Um, you know, if I'm doing things to help other people and helping other people improve their lives through my profession, and then at home, if my family is doing well and my kids are doing well, um, then I'm good. I'm pretty much good. We're all familiar with the phrase, get a life. And that is not just a, a, a throwaway cliche. You really do have to get a life. And the only way you can get a life is to make a life. My grandmother used to say all the time, whatever state I find myself in, I learn to be content. Pretty much what brings me joy every day is feeling as though I've made my mother proud. Anticipating, that is what, that's the happiness. A child waiting for Christmas to come. You know, when that, when the presents are under the tree, you know, the happiness, it's gone. You see the presents. Embrace the anticipation. So, I, that was so profound to me because now, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I anticipate having a great day. I anticipate being happy. You know, I anticipate, you know, being able to wake up and walk down the street or, or exercise. I anticipate, you know, uh, just having a wonderful life. And it's not really expecting anything, but just anticipating that you're going to feel good that day. Well, basically, I just keep in perspective that the rough patches that I've had thus far, which have been very minor, I mean, I have been very blessed. and. Um, I just know that they're always temporary. And you just keep that in perspective and you can't let the drama overwhelm you. And you just have to, you know, know that there's always some reason for it. The junk pile of stuff that you built up and all of these negative emotional, it becomes hilarious. You start to laugh. You go through some of these relationships that, you know, was so heart-wrenching and you just fall on the floor laughing like, what was I thinking? And then it, it helps you to get a different approach to life. And for me, uh, the turning point was uh, having my child. And that was not something that I had really put as a priority in my life. And so it was one of those great surprises. It's interesting. Um, I was reading a statistic recently that said that 50% or something like that of teenagers um, don't have a positive relationship um, with their parents. And I kind of turned to my daughters and I'm like, is that true? And they said, uh, yeah, in fact, it's probably higher based on our experience with some people we know. And she said to my daughter, looked at me, she said, you gotta understand, mom, our relationship is not normal. So um, I think the fact that we're still so close and I'm so close with all of my kids that we've managed to maintain that close relationship, um, I think has, has been a wonderful aspect of my life. Prayer is an important part of my life. So those da daily conversations are, how are we doing, Lord? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? What should we be doing better? And uh, so at the end of the day, you can reflect back on, did I do a good job to help other people? Did I take the resources that I've been given and share with those who didn't have what I had? Did I make a difference in someone's life? And I have to be accountable for that. So that's why the daily conversations. And uh, sometimes, depending on what the answer is, depends on how you do the next day. <laughs> One of the recent projects that I've initiated and grown that I'm very proud of is our community summer jobs program that provides summer employment to young adults in the community who are from some of our most troubled communities. One young lady who wrote us back and said that she became the role model for her entire block at 17 years old because unfortunately she was the only person getting up and going to a job every day. But that was empowering for her, and she wanted to continue that. Wow. 
it makes me feel <laughs> great and and very it's very rewarding to know that you found a way to use your day-to-day -day work and your paycheck and your grind to really doing something meaningful and impactful to people who really need it. It was really kind of cool because when I graduated from college, I think they gave you four or five tickets or something. I don't know how my family did it, but I probably had 50 people at my graduation from college. And I looked out and I expected my mom or my grandmother just to be there, but my entire family was there. And it felt like they were all kind of saying, we finally got, we finally got to the end. You know, we finally, everybody celebrated our success, my success. And I think part of it was because, um, they all felt like they had a part in it, whether it was my aunt who gave me just $20 in my pocket because I didn't have any money, or somebody who cooked me dinner on a Sunday. It makes you realize that sometimes you feel like you're on that journey by yourself, but when you get to the end and you can really see your success, you see where people lifted you up or gave you a hand, and you didn't realize that at the time because you just kind of were going through, your, through the motions all by yourself, thinking it's all on you, but you realize that you never make any of those journeys by yourself.